I know I have before in the past entitled my videos blatantly sexy things that had nothing to do with the video just so I could get prepubescent boys to subscribe to my videos but damn it this part of Maduro's mask is possibly the sexiest thing that's ever happened on the N64 which is not saying very much at all Lynx gets a face full of creamia and for some reason this small little cutscene is forever known around the internet as the sexiest thing to ever happen in Zelda which by far, which like on the N64 is not much um, yeah this is just a small little cutscene I wanted to show off I, th I think it's I think it's worth showing off just for the humor of it of seeing Link get a f face full of creamia which is in a f which is a funny name in itself but anyway on to what we're supposed to be doing in this video into live commentary. Ooh, see you guys in a second. Meh. Hello, everybody. This is Dizzy Dragon. Welcome you to the final episode before we have our epic confrontation with Skull Kid. But we have one more thing that I want to get out of the way. And by out of the way, I mean I'm. It's a hundred percent it. You have to do. So we're gonna. Swim over here. A lot of people don't even know this over here even exists if you're just skimming through this game. If you swim over here, you find a waterfall, and there's a little sign. We'll read the sign. Secret shrine behind the waterfall. How secret can it be if there's a sign that says, right behind here is a big secret. Don't tell anybody. Now awaiting the challenges of bold visitors, sure of their might. He he he. Well, that's kind of a clue who is... Well, that's kind of a clue of what we'll find inside, or who we'll find inside, actually. Alright, so, in here, since it is all dark and it's a cave, there is no way to open that door unless you have light arrows. You can't use the mirror shield because there's no light to reflect. You have to use light arrows. And you have to know that you can use light arrows to open those switches. I know some people don't even know that. So we're going to go through these doors. Oh, and it's the Poe guy. Hee hee hee. It seems somehow you have managed to send the Akanya's wandering spirits into peace. But outside of Akanya, there are still swarms of wandering spirits with lingering regrets. And if you just heard Navi, that's my ringtone, I'm sorry. The ones in the room want to meet you again and have been waiting here for quite a while. Go see them if you feel like it. I'm sure they'll welcome you. Hee 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 hee. And he fades to black. Alright, so hold on, I want to get my uh, bunny hood on. Because I just like having this on. Alright, so you're going to see a very common theme with all these rooms. And that theme is that the Great Fairy Sword will demolish everything in here. That's not really the theme, but the theme is that every mid boss from all the temples that is who you're going to be fighting in all these rooms. And if you don't remember, this is the mid. We actually only fought one of these guys, even though now there's three of them. Oh my gosh. How is it that I. Oh my god, did I take all three of them out with one spin attack? Hey, that, that wasn't so bad. But, uh. In Woodfall, this is the only one that's kind of different. There was only one of those guys, but since it's possible to now have the Gilded Sword, you could literally one hit one of those guys. You could already want to hit them if you use a Deku stick, uh, jump slash. But if you have the Gilded Sword, it will also just kind of one hit them. So they had they, like, they had to make more than just what it was in Woodfall because it was way too easy. All right, next we're going to be moving on to what was the mid boss in uh, Snowhead. And in case you were tired of fighting with Rube, he makes one final appearance. There you are. But we have the light arrows now, so he's not nearly as bad. The only problem though is there's no map for this area, so it's going to be like you have to actually look around. Oh, there's a pillar in the way. Don't look directly at him or else he'll disappear and make sure not to miss. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll trade off shots. It took a full heart? Jeez. Like, anything that can take a full heart away from Link, that's 
That's pretty impressive considering Link has the whole double damage thing going on for him. Oh no. I should dodge that. I'm a little uh relax on my skills right now to be honest. Um since my last time recording, I have uh I've been uploading fairly regularly, however I have uh I haven't been playing much Zelda. I've actually played a lot of Assassin's Creed. As in an epic amount of Assassin's Creed. I've uh I've uh actually a hundred percent almost a hundred percent brotherhood and I have bought everything that is able to be bought in Revelation so far in about the span of three or four days. Actually, three days to be exact. Whatever. I'm, I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed. If I ever get uh, better recording equipment, I'd, I'd probably do an LP of those. Um, hold on one second, guys. Alright, everybody, I'm back. Of course, as soon as I start talking smack on my uh, recording, uh, device, it decides to bug out on me, so I had to stop it real quick so I could, uh, restart it to make sure I didn't lose any footage or audio. Um, unfortunately though, I didn't lose any footage or audio, but I accidentally saved my audio into this one file that I have before I decided that organization would be a good thing, and it has just, like, a thousand things in it that are just it's like just a maze of files and literally impossible to find the original any the impossible to find anything I have like three things I have like four or five things that are just untitled um, I have several things that are just like very generic titles like heart piece like there are 50 heart pieces there are, there's no way I'd be able to find it so um, I had to post commentate it so then I post commentated it I did a really good job, but then I realized I was talking into an unplugged mic like a jackass. So this is my second t attempt to post commentate this. Um, so far, I think it's going pretty well. Uh, definitely better than the first live commentary, because I was just kind of like, like, er, I have to fight this guy again. I hate fighting this guy. This is, of course, being the mid boss from Great Bay. Never, never one of my favorite bosses. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, it's my, well. Not a pain. It's fact. This is my worst boss in this game. It's not the hardest boss. I will. I. I don't think I've ever died on him. No, I don't think I've ever died on this boss. It's just that I'm just not very good at it. Like every other boss, if I really put my mind to it, I can beat in a reasonable amount of time. This one is just like. Uh, I, just a real quick thing you can see me. I, I use all my magic in this fight using light arrows. You can see how fast light arrows drain your magic. Also, another thing uh, I used for the first time here against this guy is the Great Fairy Sword. It has the ginormous range on the spin attack, which you can use even if your magic is drained. Um, you can still use the spin attack if you don't charge it. So that's cool. Um, and, but it has such a huge range, you can just knock off a bunch of bubbles and then take if you do a second one it can take them all out before uh, they can get away so that's one strategy that I used just not very well it got to the point where I was doing this I was just like I have almost two rows of hearts and double damage screw trying <laughs> and no matter what I am not gonna die so that that was that finally I got mad at these hearts or these uh, bubbles I got mad that they were so near me, so I just uh, I decided to get rid of all of them. I know it took like a couple swings of the Great Fairy Sword to take them all out. So that's pretty cool. And the eyeball explodes, because that's the only reasonable way for an eyeball to die, right? I got really close to standing on this heart, or this chest or chest, but all I could settle for was an epic backflip right there. And pick up another silver ruby. You get 400 rubies or completing this place, which is pretty cool. But I waste I literally just wasted five hundred rubies for no reason before I even came here. Which just shows you how unimportant money is to me right now. <laughs> because I had to redo that ruby heart piece and I have so much rubies in the bank right now that it is redonkulous. So I'm not even worried about it. Boom, we're only here for one reason, and I think most of you guys know what that is. And but first, before we get what we came here, we're gonna have to fight this Garo Master. I, I hit him really quick with a spin attack, and I try to replicate that, but it does not work. And then I try shaking arrow for some reason. That doesn't work. 
And then I finally just like, all right, time to do the actual way to beat this guy. Um, the best way, in my opinion, to defeat this guy is to actually not lock on. Unlock on. He will try to appear behind you, and that's whenever you can just run up and hit him with the sword. Preferably the Great Fairy Sword. Because as you can see, if you like hit him, if you, all, all it takes with the Great Fairy Sword, I mean, I think four hits? I think I, I think I only hit him four times there and took him out. So Great Fairy Sword for the win. And also, the second time fighting the Garo Master, the second time we land on the treasure chest. I mean, not as cool as whatever we did with the light arrows. It was in the middle of a cutscene, but still, that that's pretty awesome. Ugh. Man, I got all kind of belches coming up. I just ate a bunch of Arby's, I guess, and not agreeing with me. I mean, I, I know you guys probably don't want to hear about my dinner, but just so you guys know. Hee 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 hee, you really are an amazing person, Dizzy. It seems you've somehow managed to heal their souls. Maybe I shall vanish soon myself. Well then. <laughs> never knew they had souls. It's kind of <laughs> like something I never really expected. Or I was like, oh, I just killed a bunch of lizards. I must have freed their souls. That's not something I really think of when I'm playing a Zelda game. So we're here. We get we. The only reason we came here was to get one thing, and that is to get a heart piece. That completes another heart container. Not that we need them at this point, really. Watch this jump real quick. Yeah, wasn't that cool? That was really cool. <laughs> but anyway, so we get another heart container. That's that's cool. We're only one heart container shy of having all of them. For some reason, I don't know why they programmed it like this because it, like it has the action of you running out of the cave, but the the running animation lasts too long, and no matter what you do, you're gonna wind up running automatically into the water there. So I climb back onto the ledge, re-equip my Zoro mask because I want to show something off. Now this is something I just found as a kid, because as a kid I'd play Majora's Mask all the time when I was bored. I wouldn't just play the game, I'd just do random things, like explore, like all the ins and outs of the game. Uh, you know, just like just random things, like I'd do the Goron race a bunch of times, I'd roll as a Goron in Termina Field to try to hit all the jumps and stuff like this. And this is just one of the things that I found that I thought was really cool. and. Then when I show it off to people, I find that not very many people know about this, and I find you know it's just another really cool thing in Majora's Mask. And so if you if swim over here as a Goron, or not as a Goron, if you swim over here as a Zoro, you come out in Southern Swamp, and I think that's really cool. Uh, I've watched several speedruns of this game, and there there was one where uh, this guy who at one point held the record for speedrunning Majora's Mask. Uh, was talking about how whenever he speeds runs Majora's Mask, it's not the glit the crazy glitches that like make people like all shocked. It's whenever he does that right there, and they're just like, "Whoa, how did you do that?" And she's like, "What?" <laughs> it's like that's just a part of the game, <laughs> but people just don't understand. I, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we have gotten almost all the heart containers. The last heart container that you can only get in the last area of the game. So in the next video, which I'm feeling I might record right after I'm done with this commentary, it's, I mean, it's 11 o'clock on a Friday, so I should probably be like on a date or something, but my girlfriend's busy and I have nothing better to do than that besides play some more Assassin's Creed, which I really don't need to play any more Assassin's Creed. I'm, I'm starting to have dreams that I'm an animus, but oh well, nah, that's, that's going way too, much, way too much into my personal life. <laughs> So anyway, I will see you guys next time whenever we confront the Skull Kid for the final time. I'm going to kick his ass. So if you can, like, comment, and subscribe. That will make me feel better about myself. I'll see you guys next time.